So without further ado, let's get into it. I will post the slides here. Someone always asks, um, do, can we get the slides? So that's out of the way. So the slides are actually already on SlideShare. So you can grab them from there. And if you do post something on social media, please include Verge's account, Verge.org. We don't have a shared hashtag. Well, we try to propagate the hashtag digital youth work. So use that as well, but please add us as well. Cool. I've been around in the youth field since about 2003, 2004, something like this. And I'm a youth worker by trade. I'm also a huge geek. So I've been bringing this digital stuff into the mix all the time. And uh, I've gravitated into different projects about digital media and digital youth work already from the beginning. I've done a lot of stuff on youth participation, etc. as well, but the digital thing has always been there. And that's what landed me where I am today. So I work in Berke, a center for expertise on digital youth work full time as a digital youth work expert and digital youth work trainer. So that's cool. And it's really cool that we have this organization in Finland that can really focus full time on digital youth work. We do know that's not the case everywhere. So we are fortunate. In Verke, I specialize mostly in maker activities from the practice side. So tinkering with all kinds of electronics. I have a 3D printer here in my home office and I have a bunch of Arduinos laying around and I build robots for fun. So that's always a fun activity to do with youth workers as well. I see at least one participant actually from our maker activities in youth work training. Hi, nice to see a familiar face. We also talk a lot about currently about how to measure the impact of digital youth work. And also we work with both youth workers as well as organizations, because we feel that increasing competencies isn't enough if the organizational support isn't there. So we also talk a lot about strategic implementation of youth work, uh, digital youth work, and really on, uh, on an organizational scale. We have to talk with the planners and uh, managers that can happen. I don't know if someone recognizes this, but this is a bit from my viewpoint where I come from. My favorite science fiction author, I told you I was a nerd, Arthur C. Clarke uh, summarized already in the 60s some viewpoints into technology, which I really, I, or they really resonate for me. Firstly, that the only way of discovering the limits of the possible, of what is possible, is to venture and push towards the impossible. So if we never try to expand our viewpoint on how to do youth work, it will never change. And we are the ones who have to push it, who are hands down in the field. So no one else will do it for us. Secondly, and I think this is especially true for maker activities and technology education, that if you don't understand at all how technology works, it might as well be powered by pixies and stardust. So it's indistinguishable from magic, right? And thirdly, any revolutionary idea or any new innovation for that matter can be, especially in organizations, it can be broke down into three phrases. Completely impossible. Then if you push through that, your manager might say, ah, okay, it might be possible, but it's not worth doing. It's not actually youth work. And then when you push through and actually implement it anyway, they will say, ah, I said it was a good idea all along. This is not always the case. Sometimes management your boss can be very supportive, but this is mostly to say that you have to be the ones to advocate for more digitalization in youth work, because otherwise no one else will do it for you. Uh, as I said, I come from the organization Berke. We have a system in Finland where we have centers for expertise on different areas of youth work, and this is very fortunate. We are fully funded by our Ministry of Culture and Education. So we don't have to go through the hassle as many other projects do, development projects do that we have to figure out where to get funding. We do have to apply for funding. We do have to apply for the status of being a center for expertise, but once we get that, we are fully funded. So that's good. We have seven full-time members, uh, staff members currently, and one, one half-time plus one trainee. So we are fairly well staffed. As well. Uh, very well staffed as well, which is nice. 
We currently focus on climate effects of technologization. This is something that hasn't been talked about a lot in Finland, although due to the COVID pandemic, this has been a bit on the back burner now. We've obviously had our hands full on training youth workers on different topics. If I'll take an, a practical example of what we've trained people on about, my video currently looks like this on Zoom, right? And I sound like this because I have a microphone here. One thing we've been training youth workers about several times is if I put the internal microphone and I put the normal FaceTime camera and I also turn my lights on. So most webinars, most sessions with youth workers look like this. So how can young people, uh, how can youth workers create more engaging content on any kind of platform, whether it's social media or whatever? <laughs> That looks quite horrible. Let's get that back. Now here should be the sound, and then we switch to the right camera as soon as I can find it. There, much better on the eyes. And this is this is like the practical stuff that we get asked about a lot. Second thing in Finland was really about how do we how do we implement Discord as a youth work tool because this was. For one reason or the other, this was the platform of choice for Finnish youth workers during the pandemic. So this is what we also talk with youth workers a lot like, okay, how do we set this up? Or rather, we are here now, what the heck do we do now? So no idea about the implementation. Yeah. But we've always talked about the definition of digital youth work as more than being online. So now we are also focusing on what do we take out of this online youth work that was implemented during the pandemic? People are motivated, people understand the value. So how do we take that learning and put it in the other effect? You mean Discord? Yes. What did I say? I said something else. Okay. And also competence criteria, because measuring the impact of digital youth work is extremely difficult currently. For that matter, measuring the impact of any youth work is, is a mean trick, but we are talking about how to measure impact in, in digital youth work and also what competence criteria for youth workers is linked to that. So the basics very quickly, I'm sure you most of you have heard about digital youth work. So digital youth work quite simply means using or addressing digital media in youth work. It's as simple as that. It's not a party trick. It's not something highly specialized. It's really whenever you're either using digital technology or for example, talking to young people about the effects of technology on their lives, you're already doing digital youth work. Yeah. And important thing to highlight is that there are always the same goals, same values in place as the other youth work that you do. Those might be different goals than our youth work goals, but your specific organizations and your like youth work cultures reality is what they are. And youth work, uh, digital youth work can be a tool activity or a content, which I'll go on the next slide. So when it's a tool, for example, if you're using digital tools to organize, organize group activities and online youth work, whether it, uh, during a pandemic or otherwise would fall into this. In Finland, it has been traditionally using low threshold help services to engage, to offer help for young people. Secondly, when it's an activity, it could be game education activities, could be esports, could be game development programming. It could be maker activities. My, my one biggest love in youth work could be GPS-enabled activities like ActionBound, which I know Nerius uses extensively, or at least used to use at one point. And thirdly, when it's a content, you're reflecting on the effects of uh, digital media on young people. Digital, uh, young people use a lot of digital media, but they do need our help to reflect on how it affects their lives. So where are we now? What is going on? Of course, the current situation is underpinned by the whole pandemic thing, uh, but the situation is very varied in different uh, European countries. A lot of people during the pandemic see online youth work or digital youth work as an alternative to traditional youth work, that it's only something we have to do as long as we must, and then when we can get back to normal, we can breathe again and do the stuff that we've, we've done in the past as well. That it's only a fail safe. It's something to be only implemented in emergencies and when we simply have to. But it's really challenging to make that a long-term thing in youth work because 
yeah, sure. During a pandemic, when everything else is closed, you have all the resources and you, all the staff resources and the time in your disposal because you can't do anything else. But we saw also in Finland that, and in other countries I've heard as well, that once they started loosening the restrictions, immediately all digital youth work activities stopped almost completely to a halt. Not everywhere. Some places have been successfully still implementing digital youth work as well. And it's a problem also with developing people's competencies. Even in Finland, where uh, youth work is highly professionalized and we have a long tradition of digital youth work and online youth work, still a lot of people on our Discord server, when before the pandemic, we had about 120 people there. Currently, we have 1,200 people there. And a lot of questions that we got, or first messages we got was like, okay, I'm here. I've never seen this thing before. What do I do? I've never done any kind of work online. So the online work that had been done was still few individuals doing that work. So that presents obviously a challenge for long-term competence development and strategic development of the work. Digital use work can be seen as a special skill that's only had by some nerds like me and Nerius. Something compared to, I would say, like dance activities, it would be surreal if I would suddenly go and host a dance activity for young people. Might be uh, uh, humorous in a way, but maybe they wouldn't get that much you know, like dance content out of that. And digital youth work can be seen as something that can be only done by a special few because they have the skills. But I would advocate that this can be learned by anyone. And you can just start, experiment, try and see where you get. Learning by doing is my preferred learning method anyway. Again, if it's only in the hands of select few, then it's really hard to implement into the daily work. If the one guy doing it leaves and changes jobs, then all the work will stop. And that's obviously not optimal. Digital youth work can be a parallel process. Are we trying to maybe reach, let's say, hard to reach young people, like geographically hard to reach young people, then it's parallel to the other work. Again, then the resources are challenging. It's about prioritization. Do we want to prioritize this kind of work? It might be also that we offer activities to a certain group of young people that need those activities, let's say, enhancing their social skills by gaming online with them. It's then still parallel to the other work. We don't offer this to everyone. It can bring a lot of cool stuff to the table, but it's challenging for the uh, resources again. This may be the most optimal thing that is complementary to the work that we are already doing. If the digitality brings added value to the youth work that we're doing, and this is always an important question, does it bring added value? I like playing with technology just for the sake of technology, but it's maybe not wise in a youth work context because the, the digital youth work should always support the goals of the youth work that's being done. If it doesn't, then we should probably not implement that thing. It can be more engaging for young people to use digital processes, but this should not be the only reason why you're doing something digitally, because then it becomes about the digitalization itself. It will be appealing to me because I'm a technology geek, but it won't be appealing to everyone. And the central challenge, which is a challenge in all youth work, is identifying what our core processes and goals actually are. We might think that it's clear, but it's necessarily not. Two examples about ongoing research about what's going on currently. Our first results are published on Salto about what, how digital youth work is in post-COVID times, the effects of the whole pandemic on the, on the digital youth work scene. And they highlighted that we need to recognize digital youth work, that it's actually a viable tool. We need to support youth workers and consider their competencies. And thirdly, we need to provide access to digital technologies, both to the workers and the young people themselves. Another research project that's going on, this is not only about digital youth work, but rather about the effects of the COVID pandemic on the youth field at large is from the Ray Network on Arsenal Plus, and you can find this on researchyouth.net. They're assessing the impact of corona pandemic on youth work in Europe. And this is also ongoing research, but the first results are already available. A bit heavy reading, but interesting stuff nonetheless. 
Where are we going in a few minutes? On a practice level, make first sure that you've actually identified what you're doing, where you're trying to get, what your goals are, what your values are, and what is the work that you do. Also your target group, who are you working with? One of our keynote speakers in events came, comes from the uh, business side of things, and he said, uh, st steal or borrow, but don't give it back. I would say steal and borrow, but give it back. Make it your own and then share what you have done with it so others can learn from your learning as well. A lot is already happening. There are a lot of resources available. I have a couple of links in, in one slide. And so you can check what people have already done and then you can see what you can use. You can innovate new practice. Here's a picture of our uh, material in a box, which can be used to innovate new digital use of practice or reinvent existing practices as well. And please experiment. Be, allow yourself to fail, but learn from that failure, iterate what you can do better, and then implement what you've learned. It sounds complicated, but it's actually simple once you get into the groove of the process. You need to identify what kind of plans do you have in your organizations. Strategic plans that contains the overarching goals, values, resources, blah, blah, blah. But then separate them from the action plans, like how these goals are actually implemented in your youth work unit, for example, in a youth house, in your youth organization, what kind of activities there are, etc. And then also look at your personal style of work. Are you actually working towards those goals, towards those plans or not? A frequent question we get about planning digital youth work is, okay, what do we do if no one actually acts according to the plans? So this is one important step in your uh, community as well. And then identify what you actually do on an organizational level. So what, what is the organization doing? What is your work community doing? And what is the practice level? So what do you actually do with the kids you work with? This sounds complicated, and it is. We just did an exercise for for one of our events where our it isn't finished obviously but our participants had to focus on on benefits obstacles risks and what is best in more planning oriented implementation and here on the other scale is uh, like customer work and organizational level uh, sorry organizational level is in the bottom and then there is the work community level so look at all these plans all these things from different perspectives Three resource hubs. Our web pages have some, some English materials. Our, some of our publications are in English as well. And you can get them either as a PDF or if we have mailed copies them, of them, we will also mail out paper copies for free within Europe uh, or within the EU. The EU was one project we were involved in. There are a lot of cool resources there from uh, five partner countries as well. And I mentioned already researchyouth.net. And our guidelines uh, for digital youth work are also, also available uh, on our website, and you can find them there. So finally, make sure that you can identify your core processes and look at structures that kind of surround your work. Are, you, are they supporting innovating and re, reinventing your practice or not? And then look at yourselves, look at your team, look at your competencies. Do you have the ability, and almost more importantly, do you have the motivation to actually reinvent what you are doing and take that digital thing and run with it? And that, of course, helps us prepare for any potential uh, future pandemic or other abrupt change in our field. So we can hopefully react better. And we've already seen that organizations who have thought strategically about this whole digital thing, they were able to react much faster to this COVID pandemic and other changes as well. Thank you. I can be reached in this email. Feel free to drop me a line if something you remember in the middle of the night. Ah, I was supposed to ask this thing, but I forgot. And our web page can be found there. One minute over. That's fairly good for me. Thanks. Uh, now that you mentioned, uh, you ob observe that organizations which were already investing in planning and doing digital youth work, it seems that for them the COVID wasn't very surprising. 
it was easy in a way to adapt it. Do you have any particular examples maybe which inspires further digital youth for development? From the top of my head, I don't remember the name of the organization now, but there is one small community in Finland and they've approached digital youth work very much in an organized and strategically planned way. And they were doing some activities already around how to how to work with volunteer young volunteers, for example, using social media channels. And they've been they've already they had talks about setting up a Discord server for for their young people and using those young volunteers uh, as peer moderators there. And when COVID hit. They pivoted, I think, within under a week. So they had already their volunteers engaged. They had the server set up. They could very easily set the goals of how this server should be implemented because they could look at their strategies where they they had like general goals for digital youth work already. Some organizations that had more like general goals on youth work they had to sit down and have that discussion first on okay what what might this maybe mean if we go onto an online platform and some goals were are were not always applicable of course so it was much more of a process for them to get things implemented i would say uh, those kind of organizations especially bigger ones they started popping up at around maybe two three weeks so their reaction time was significantly longer. What have you observed with people just jumping in and using some of the technology? I think it works. I would actually, almost as a doctor, I would prescribe just jumping in and seeing where you land if the goal is to alleviate fears about technology. Because we all fear what we don't understand. And when people don't understand technology, it's really frightening to start building robots or go into an online server to do youth work. But if this kind of experimentation is not done strategically, if we don't, for example, ask questions afterwards from ourselves or from each other, okay, what did we learn from this? Just jumping in, then it will be just jumping in. Sure, we might get to the goal of that we are not so afraid anymore of technology, but it doesn't translate into... Uh, measurable youth work goals so well but yeah i would recommend a lot of organizations when they asked us what are all the things we should consider before we set up for example discord we always said set it up immediately and see how it works see how it feels and then ask us additional questions so you understand a bit what you're also talking about because yeah for example discord you can set up 100 servers today for free and experiment to your heart's content and then see what sticks, what works, what doesn't, right? Examples, tips about how to get over around the digital gap. And I think that's one of the topics, again, we we are exploring already in previous webinar, but also it's an ongoing, knowing our uh, goals in youth work. So maybe you can respond to this. What are the thinking, reflection, and even more practices, maybe good examples? Yeah. One good thing is, is, of course, that if we are, for example, if we are building, I mentioned using uh, digital youth work as an activity. So if we are using, for example, uh, mobile devices with GPS and some apps to engage young people, we need to be, we need to be making sure that we are inclusive. We need to be aware that there is a digital gap in terms of uh, skills to use technology. So we have to make sure that everyone can take part in the activity on the same level. We have to make sure they have access to technology. So I would, for example, I would uh, suggest using youth work provided devices for the activity. So everyone is on the same line also. We shouldn't just assume that, oh, everyone has a smartphone anyway. No, they don't. It's a very tricky question, the digital gap in terms of young people's competencies, how to make sure of that. I would say, Testing with a peer, testing a new activity or approach with a peer group of young people, to ask them to give feedback on how accessible you actually made some kind of new approach, and that would be one good, one good thing I would maybe try to implement. Mm-hmm.